The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello, everyone, and good evening, and welcome to Scarefest Television. The original broadcast date is, God, it's August, people. It is August 13th, Friday the 13th, to be precise, Friday the 13th, August 13th. Welcome, and um, and hello, and we've got, okay, now, just to give everybody a little lowdown on what's going on tonight, uh, of course, now, our guest tonight is Michael Ayers from, with the Phantom Ghost Project, UTV. Uh, my co-host is the lovely and talented Chad Harlan. Hello, Chad. And, uh, Howdy. How are you all? And uh, and uh, we do have, at the at the 30-minute mark, we have... Um, okay, uh, I'm going to tell you, Michael, I am hearing uh, uh, background noise on your mic. Okay, now, uh, everybody, at the 30-minute mark... That good? Bad. That's bad because it talks over the host. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. So I can I can hear your DVD player or whatever you're playing with. Anyway, at the thirty minute mark, everybody, we we do have some announcements to make tonight. We got uh, some things we got to push, some business we got to do. But we do have a couple more announcements, and then next week, if everything goes on schedule, we're gonna do a name dump. We're just gonna get ever the rest of the names we got and just dump them in your lap. And uh, and that'll be and that'll just make everybody have a virtual. I don't want to say the word orgasm, but you know it's Scarefest TV, so I might say it anyway. Everybody, well, let's uh, go ahead and get to our guest. And, oops, there we go. And there we go, Michael. Welcome to the show, everybody. Michael is actually sitting in the Phantom Ghost Project UTV. How's it going tonight, guys? It's up. It's going. It is pouring now. It is pouring down rain here in Kentucky. I don't know where it's doing where you're at. So, in other words, if you, if you hear like this loud crashing noise, it's probably a tree coming through my roof from the storms that are going through. <laughs> um, now, the very first question right out of the bat, Michael, is I have to ask you, uh, to, how does one survive the year 2020? And this is your actual first ever Zoom call. Yep, uh, it is um, um, really um, uh, 2020 for me was um, a year of, of building, and so 2020 was like a, a big old blur. So um, um, also, this has just been off off air. Can you flip this screen? Um, on this, or does it stay on the front of your like phone where you can flip it the other way, or, or do you can you flip it? Uh, but I, I, I can't do shit. You can flip it, I guess. I don't know. If you turn it sideways, I think you're it's a phone. I have no idea. Uh, but you're it is what it is on my end. The um, uh, yeah, I see on my, my end, it's got a little box. I don't, I'm assuming my box is bigger on y'all's end for, for some reason, but very small on my end. So I'm trying to get different things that I like about this project, really, with these skulls I've done in the doors, uh, with the eyeballs lit up. We thank uh, Deadhead Props um, at uh, get some of these lighted eyeballs and everything with their custom irises and everything, and um, trying to show those. And well, uh, my first time Zoomer and everything. Now, I'm, just, I, I'm going to call you out here. I think the real reason you started this project last year was because original equipment manufacturer parts are absolutely fucking impossible to come by for the last 12 months. And so you just decided to take this thing and just customize it because 
you, you couldn't get original parts for it. <laughs> um, they, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, Polaris uh, really uh, surprised me with an offer and uh, from doing the uh, Skull Crusher project and 2020, a lot of things were canceled and everything like that. Um, and um, the Skull Crusher project was getting old a little bit. Uh, man, but the project, that project, I still own it. Um, it's still a love project. And the things fell, fell into place for players. And, um, and um, a lot of companies know me and everything like that. So it's in the off-road industry. Um, and um, they knew what I was going to do. So I said, well, uh, we know everything's going to boom again whenever all the all the uh, China virus <laughs> um, gets done everything. And, um, um, and I said, let's do it. So uh, um, I've now, done quick, it. And, now, quick follow-up. One follow-up to that. This is the fruit of my labor. I do want to ask you now, the scope, you keep saying about how old the skull pressure was because someone got sick one. Once or twice, how, how long? What was the longevity of the Skull Crusher project as far as uh, taking out and showing off that piece? Um, it, it got done in uh, May of 2016, and um, uh, done a couple of shows. And I guess we'll get right into everything about what I what I love about Scarefest is. Um, I'd always wanted to do some horror conventions and, but, um, I figured I wasn't going to go as a, as a, as a person wanting just to be there like a regular attendee. Um, I built that project and I'm a big fan of skulls and skeletons and stuff like that. And everybody says when they see both these projects got a very, uh, big imagination. Um, and I saw the scare fest and I was like, uh, 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 uh um, a um this is great and everything it seemed like it was um uh, um my phone fell and everything make sure it's there we go <laughs> and um um there we go um and um uh because i don't got a wi-fi where i'm at so i'm having to use i got wi-fi but i'm too far away from my house to probably pick it up and everything so but anyways beyond all that and um, I saw that um, it seemed very low key and um, uh, had a lot of big things. And I definitely want to thank Patty Starr. Um, I talked to Patty about about bringing the Skull Crusher project there and everything, and she loved the idea and everything. And um, um, and uh, I just pulled the phone, and the um, the the rest is history, I guess. So um, and it ran all the way to 2019. And uh, the end of 2019, October, I retired it. And um, so it ran for about uh, about three years. Well, Michael, okay. take me back a little bit and tell me how you decided to start customizing ATVs. Um, I've always had an itch to do. I, I built a big custom car back about 12 years ago. And, um, and um, of course... Um, let's just, let's just put it like this way. I'm going to reveal what, what I had, what it is, what I had, what I have going now for me. But back, back 2013, 14, I wasn't financially stable to where I could be able to like take off a whole winter and everything like that. And, um, um, and do things. And when I started to develop up a little bit of, of the green stuff <laughs> and, um, and that first project, uh, a lot of companies gave me some really good discounts. I had a lot of full sponsorships, but a lot of companies gave me good discounts. So, um, and um, the fiberglass work now, which everybody, oh, hopefully everybody will attend this, the, the Scarefest 13 and see this project in person and everything. It's got a daytime life and it'll uh, probably it'll be the same lightness all the way, but I got a lot of lighting in the project. And, um, but, um, the fiberglass work. Um, I watched a guy in Knoxville, Tennessee, that I um, that I learned it from and everything. And um, um, there really is no answer to that question. All and all, well, there is an answer really. The UTV market back in 2014, 2015 
was was beginning, but the 1000s, the 1000 cc's with these machines, like this I'm sitting in right now, I've got 181 horsepower, and you push the gas a little bit, and you're back in your seat like a Mustang, because uh, there's no weight to these machines and everything, and um, and that market was just begging to be plucked, 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 uh, like the motorcycle market back in the 60s when Harley Davidson coming board on that, and so there was a lot of reasons. I got itchy to do something. I learned how to do the fiberglass. The UTV mark was growing. And uh, I don't answer that question with. Well, how did you, when you were doing that, how did you uh, decide to do more of a horror themed one instead of, you know, uh, something more mainstream? Well, because I love skulls and skeletons. That's why I put the Skull Crusher project. I uh, built the uh, fiberglass seats uh, that look like a, a coffin with the skeletons in them and stuff like that. Um, I just, I love, I love Halloween is my second favorite holiday. Um, Christmas is, I was going to try to hold the phone and it dropped again. There we go. But, um, 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 I was just a big fan of skull skeletons, and uh, what I say is Christmas is my first holiday because I have to always thank uh, the Lord Jesus Christ for having everything to do with me and, and making things go right and everything. And and Halloween's always been my second favorite thing. I've always been a big, I don't say prankster, uh, but uh, just always loved Halloween, and um, and and I've always just been a really easy get along with guy. Um, uh, so just really the fascination with skulls and skeletons and, um, and, um, that's it. They're really, it's hard to do. This is really, this project I got now is a character project, even though I call it the Phantom Ghost Project, but if you look a lot of the things of this project. Right, bro, we lost him for a moment there. He'll call back in and we'll go to commercial break while he's calling in. Everybody, we'll be right back with more Scarefest TV. Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. TellMeTarot.com Rare tarot and oracle decks for the discerning enthusiast or collector. Our decks are not for everyone. If you are a rare deck collector, art collector, or simply fall in love with a deck, then we might be for you. Right now, get 10% off your first order just for subscribing to their newsletter. Shipping is just $5.99 in the United States. TellMeTarot.com And okay. welcome back everybody to Scarefest TV. Michael came back just in the nick of time to uh, to, to rejoin the show. Um, uh, what? Not not well, not, I can the, say, not I can the, say, I can the, all the scare fest stuff because 
Uh, like I says, uh, with that previous project, Patty Starr gave me the opportunity. She loved the idea of the project, loved the project. And I was like, this would be great and everything. I'd like to bring it to the, to the scare fest and, um, uh, and, um, went there, had a fun time. It was a little, little quiet the first time and everything. And cause, um, um, I was, I was, I was well known a little bit of that project by then, but I was like, well, I'll just keep to myself a little bit and not mingle a lot with the, uh, the celebrities there. And, um, but when I went in 2017, it was great and everything. I had dinner with, um, Danny Hassel and, um, Andres, um, I can't remember his last name now, had dinner with them guys and everything like that. And, um, got to meet Robert England and that's been something I've always wanted to do and everything's my, my, my fat, my passion is Nightmare in Elm Street. Uh, either Nightmare in Elm Street or, um, um, Wishmaster. That's what I was telling Nicole. I was like, heck, if you can get Andrew Devoff and everything like that, uh, you'd have a really good Wishmaster one reunion besides, besides Robert, of course, um, and everything, but you'd have a pretty big, um, getting well, with, uh, with the Wishmaster series. I, I love it's, Wishmaster. It's like I keep telling the people in the chat room. It's not the last one. It's not the last one, everybody. We 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 got a we got a lot of people to book over the next fifty years. Um, now, okay, I want to know about, about Polaris. Now, of course, I'm here on the farm. Uh, my nephew has a Polaris. Um, um, I've got an Arctic cat. Did Polaris come to you, or did oh, we lost him again? Well, hell. So, I there you go. There it is. There it is. Uh. To get out of the back said that record in progress. <laughs> I uh we've got your audio, uh the, the video will pop up here in a second. The uh question was, did Polaris come to you or did you go to Polaris? Oh Polaris and everything like that. That's usually how it starts to an extent and everything. Um and um so I went to them and talked to them a little bit about what I was planning on doing. And uh, the machine I've got is their brand new body style uh, machine. And um, uh, because that white screen and goes away. Is it turn my turn me off every time I do that? Uh, uh, yeah, apparently, yeah, if you lose internet connection, uh, it, it drops you out of the call, then it, you're rejoining. But yeah, you keep, let me you... see if I can pull my Wi Fi up and everything. Um, I don't know if I could even pull a Wi Fi up here. Um, I got my next door neighbor, but I don't even know what his Wi Fi is and everything. <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll just, we'll just do it and everything. I better, I just think it better, better for me to sit project talking about this project instead of sitting in my own house talking about it and everything like that. So, um, is it working good now? It's yeah, you're, you're fine right now. Okay. Yeah. Then let's just, let's roll with it then. So, okay. uh, but, uh, yeah, they came to me and I, they, I like the, they like the idea that with their new body style and, and, uh, the 3000 and 3,500 hours, cause I told them I was going to do something pretty incredible this time. This thing's got 30 speakers, six TVs, a lot of a lot of custom fiberglass gauge pods and um and I got a touch screen behind the TV behind the, the gear shifter and they said we like it let's just let's do something and so the time worked out great. Now you 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 posted some pictures on your Facebook page of this thing actually out in the wild with yes. all that with all that uh, extra stuff. How does it perform actually out on the trail? It, this thing don't go trail riding. There's actually, I'm connected with, uh, with different companies. I ain't going to really do a lot of shout outs or anything like that in this video, but, um, they don't need any shout outs, but, um, I know these parks, off-road parks and now for my previous project, that road actually, I was on taking those pictures. It's a really nice road and then it turns unnice. So that was just on a really nice road. Now this project does not go on trails. Well, okay. Well, then what'd you do with the, uh, the skull crusher? It's actually up for sale. I talked when I talked to Nicole back in uh, January, June thirteenth. 
uh, after I sent her pictures of this project and she was wowed by it. And I talked to her for a good amount of time on the phone that evening. Um, um, and if everybody, when everybody's been to call me, Nicole, the owner of Scarefest. Um, and, um, and, but it's up for sale right now. Um, um, I've talked to a bunch of people that's putting some things out there and, um, um, so it's up for sale and, and if it ain't sold by Scarefest, it'll still be up for sale. And, um, and, um, somebody might buy it and bring it to Scarefest 14. You never know. You never know. Um, cause actually Nicole done an interview with it. She forgot, but in 2017, she done an interview and everything and, uh, with a TV station and, and also, <laughs> uh, cause I'm going to be sharing this video with a lot of big people that I got involved with, with the project. And, um, so if there's any entities out there that are going to come to Scarefest 13 as a media partner and they want to do an interview with Nicole, um, and, um, um, with the project, um, any, any other, that's, she told, I told her that's totally allowed and everything for her to do interviews around this project and everything to benefit the Scarefest. Well, great. Let's talk a little bit more about what all you put in it. How, you said you've got how many speakers? 30. And you're pumping those off what sort of amp? Uh, uh, um, we're running off of uh, it's got, um, one factory amplifier from Polaris, and uh, then it's got five more amplifiers and five more cardio amplifiers. Wow. Got um, three amplifiers, three smaller amplifiers. They're really small. They're in the custom console I built and uh, the custom subwoofer box in the rear. Um, it's got a window where you can see the actual amplifier in the subwoofer box I built. And then you can see them actually in the custom console I built. Um, they're running all the 30 speakers. Now it's 30 speakers counting tweeters. This thing yeah. has got, I think it's got a total of 20. 22 actual six and a half inch speakers. Well, actually, no, I take that back. No, it's got 18 six and a half inch speakers. It's got eight tweeters, bullet tweeters, are about three inches, so they're they're pretty loud and everything. And then it's got uh, in the rear, it's got four eight inch speakers, like a tower mount that mount onto the row cage. What uh, what other sort of electronics? You mentioned some TV screens. And then it's got three. It's got three subwoofers and three twelve-inch subwoofers in the rear, and those run off of two amplifiers that are in the custom cons or not custom 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 headliner that I built and everything. It's got the um, the I'm gonna I'm gonna turn some more of the lighting on and everything in the project and um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and just hold the uh, too bright. Is that one a little too bright for the for the viewing? Yeah, that's blinding out the screen. Okay, there we go. We'll tell you, yeah, there we go. Now, now you see me. Uh, we'll turn these on. Everything. Some, um, but um, let's see. Uh, what else can I turn on in here? Um, there we go. Um, and the um, custom amp uh, headliner I built and everything. There's an amplifier and. Um, a projector, not projector, but um, fiber optic lights and everything. And but um, let's see, there we go. Maybe you can see me better now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's got two cars running the subwoofers. There, thing in the rear. It's got six batteries, six batteries in the project, and it's got a custom alternator um, that um, runs everything. And that's why I can run this project for so long without it starting because I got all these batteries in the project. So. What's some other questions? You got any capacitors running those subs or? No, I got them dialed down pretty much, really down. I got the amplifiers I got here at 2,000 watt a piece. So I got 4,000 watt of subwoofer power amplifiers and they're dialed down a bunch and everything. So they don't A, run my batteries down or B, blow my subwoofers, which I can change the subwoofers out if I want to. Um, I think we lost you again. So uh, let me throw it back over to Wes for a commercial. Let's do a commercial break, everybody. When we come back, we are going to take a few moments 
to do our announcements. We'll be back in just a minute. Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Rubies can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. For links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. Hey, Scarefest fans, this is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. Sometimes you watch a movie and at the end of it, or at least for me, I'm like, oh man, I really didn't like that. I need to rip it. And then something else happens. And then it's a week later and I finally do the review. The review. And when I finally get to the review, I've thought about it for a week. The movie's kind of stuck with me and I didn't dislike it as much as I initially did, if that makes sense, because it just it stuck with me. This movie sucks, but I'm going to recommend it right up front. I know Wes liked it and I thought I was going to shit on it. And I probably would have if I've done this review five days ago. But Willie's Wonderland, if you've got the Hulus, check out Willie's Wonderland. It's a Hulu exclusive. It stars Nicolas Cage. It's written by Kevin Lewis and Geo Parsons. The interesting thing about this, it was it was on Geo Parsons' screenplay. This is one of the few things he's written. It was on what's something what was called the blood list. It's a list of unproduced, really intriguing genre films like they've got the blacklist too of like great movie scripts that just haven't been shot willie's wonderland was on that list for a while and nicholas cage found it read it became one of the producers and was very he liked it a lot now it's i hear tell that there's a game called five night at freddy five nights at freddy's it's so similar to this they, they have a little to no relation nicholas cage plays the janitor basically there's this town that has this evil demented Chuck E. cheese and in that Chuck E. Cheese are these evil, demented animatronics that kill people. And the town, once ever X amount of time, serves up a stranger for them to kill. They, they somehow blow out the tires of the vehicle when the person's coming in. They can't get it fixed. It's like, well, you know, if you go in here and clean up our demonic Chuck E. Cheese, Willie's Wonderland, we'll let you have some tires. And in the morning, you can go free as a bird. And it won't cost you a dime. And then that pe those people, whether it be a family, a few people, they, they get murdered. And they're served up to the demonic Chuck E. Cheese folk. Nicolas Cage, this isn't really a spoiler, has no lines in this movie. So if you're thinking, I hate Nicolas Cage. I hate the way he talks. Doesn't talk. Doesn't talk through the hour and 20 minutes of this film. Is it stupid? Oh, my God, it is so dumb certain things some of the acting is so bad not necessarily nicholas cage i'm a nick cage fan but some of the supporting character actors so stereotypical making so many stupid mistakes why on earth would some of these kids break into the place they're trying to save the janitor played by nicholas cage and even if there aren't why do two of them start making out in the middle of it if you guys ever watched a friday the 13th film you're like why is this happening now or maybe just no one wants to make out with me or have sex with me that's probably more accurate maybe it happens to you all all the time Willie's Wonderland is stupid. It, it takes about 10 minutes to get through the opening credits, and that's killing time because this movie's only about 85 minutes long. And don't get me wrong, it shouldn't be any longer, but they really stretch in places to get it to that length. It suffers from some low budget woes. Some of the animatronics, some of the things. There's the one doll lady. She looks awful. <laughs> you can clearly see that's just a woman in a with a with a thing on, with a headpiece on. However, it stuck with me, and I think it's more about just nick cage and his performance in and and the fact that he doesn't speak and he's constantly taking breaks and chugging these power drinks check out willie's wonderland it's got a lot of blood it's got a lot of guts no nudity but it's got a lot of blood and guts it's got a nick cage performance i always i always advise people to do that it's not really the best movie and honestly if i'd have reviewed it five days ago not so much but i do recommend it if you want something just stupid fun or maybe you are a five night at freddy's fan Check out Willie's Wonderland. This has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. 
We thought we would share the Phantom Ghost Project UTV announcement banner with everybody. Yes, you can come and see the Phantom Ghost Project UTV that we're talking about tonight at Terrorfest 13. Also appearing, Sal Lizard is back. The Sal Lizard is back. Uh, he was, I actually thought he worked for Scarefest from, because he came like several years in a row. And uh, so, <laughs> but he had been for a few years, but Sal Lizard is coming back. Born in Franklin, Kentucky. But he grew up in Indianapolis. Let's not hold that against him. Anyway, um, Billy Bob Zombie. I have not seen Billy Bob Zombie. Vampire Santa 1. Uh, he had a small, he played Santa Claus, I think, in the box, but I don't even know if he was credited. But anyway. So he's been out there, Sal Lizard, uh, the Vampire Santa, he's known as. And also, from the Ghost Finders, we have Megan Deputy. Megan Deputy is coming. If you've uh, watched the Ghost Finders on Roku, uh, I think it's briefly on fire, but Amazon decided anything paranormal sucks and just decided not to, not to give us any time anymore on the Amazon Fire Stick. That being said, you can still watch Ghost Finder, uh, Finders on Roku and uh, find their go to their website. But Maggie Deputy and, and now, okay. Beyond that, she is an accomplished makeup artist. Uh, she did uh, Sweet Home Carolina, Broken Halos, The Christmas Listing, Love on the Right. She's got a, her it, IMDb is actually full of her makeup artist credits, but uh, she's on Ghost Finders. And, and finally, she's an honest to God witch. Yes, she is an honest to God witch, and um, if you go to the Ghost Finders website, it'll tell you all about it. For your photo op op uh, opportunities, the Delta 88s. We have the uh, the I think these were um, what do they call them? Uh, uh, hero hero cars. In other words, they were actually on screen. But we we got the Delta 88s. We got the Battle Delta and. The classic Delta coming for your photo opportunities at the Scarefest. Scarefest 13 Resurrection. Scream Queen Bowling. These tickets are selling like hotcakes. We have already sold out, I think, three of the celebrities. So you need to get in because, come to find out, we had to reserve the lanes ahead of time. So we actually had to limit the number of Scream Queens. Everybody that is going to be for sale is now on sale. Last one we added was JL Depardo. Lovely her uh lady from uh, uh Destination Truth and 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 also we've uh added Aaron Ryder last week. So get your screen screen queen in the Lex Live Bolorama tickets. Go to thesecurefest.com and get in on one of the remaining screen queens. Tessa Del Zappo will be doing a gallery read, which is a psychic medium. Tessa Del Zappo, and those tickets are actually selling out. We're going to not likely to sell out anytime soon on them, but boom, they are selling right off the bat. So if you want to go ahead and reserve your seat in the Tessa Del Zappo gallery reading, those are on sale now. And don't forget our classic event, second time up. Let's sell this bitch out because Kane Hodder deserves it. Girl waxes with killers. We got Kane Hodder. We got R.A. Mihailoff. We've got Rob Mello, we've got Steve Nappy, we've got uh, 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 Vernon Wells, we've got uh, Robert Mukes, we got a whole bunch of people now. On that one, you don't get to pick who your teammate is. You're going to go in and they're going to uh, choose, they're going to do a lottery, they're going to do a draw at the, at the uh, Battle Axes, but those tickets That's are on sale. For. Those tickets are on sale, and thescarefest.com. Go there, get your tickets, get your injury tickets uh, all weekend. Get your VIP tickets. Whatever you need, it is all centered around thescarefest.com. And don't forget, film entries are open for our film festival. And the selected films will be shown at the one of the Lex Live Theaters. Actually, a couple of them, because we're doing downstairs. During the Saturday uh, big party, the winners, some of the best movies, are going to be showing on one of the screens upstairs where you can just, if you want to take a break from the party, you can go watch a horror movie. But the film festival entries are open. And don't forget, this weekend, the Central Kentucky Mystical Market is open. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, uh, opens at, I want to say, 10. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. tomorrow, 
That's at the Clarion Hotel on Newtown Pike. So thank you everybody and just uh that's good now this back to us and one of our banners did work. It's it was for the gift shop at Scarefest Road. We still have t shirts. We have sold out of sweatshirts. If you wanted a Scarefest sweatshirt, hard luck. They are pretty well sold out. We got a, just two or three of them. But we do still have plenty of uh, Lost Year 2020 t shirts. Go to scarefestradio.com and click gift shop link. Um, okay, so you, uh, you went to uh, Polaris. See, I, I wanted to know if you knew anything about Articat because I want to know why Articat hides their dipstick so deep within the engine that you never check the oil. I wanted to know if you knew anything about that, Michael. Does it? Uh, <laughs> no, because the Skull Crusher project is an Articat. It's an Articat. Uh, the first year they came out with a 1000 Articat uh, side by side in 2012, the Skull Crusher uh-huh. project. So that was my first. And it is deep. It is deep down in there, and everything like that. So, <laughs> see, see, uh, <laughs> I didn't make it up, did I? Uh, I no, remember when I that, when I got mine the first time. I went to change the oil. The instructions to go to you know open the the drain plug. You know, drain your oil. Thing is, everybody, if you're not familiar with ATVs, when you buy them stock, the entire underneath is covered with this big sheet of plastic uh, to protect it, and there's little holes everywhere. There, you can't. You have to know which hole the oil drain is in. Just bitching a little bit. Just bitching a little bit there. Yeah, if you maybe read the directions. No, no. Yeah, I even went on YouTube and looked at a video. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be the best way. Uh, unless you um, get the machine and take it to a dealer and let them give you a full rundown of of how the maintenance the machine, then that's about the best way. YouTube it. My, my. My dealer was not going to show me where the drain plug was. He did show me where the dipstick was, although when he showed it to me, it didn't look quite so far down in the dark recesses of the engine. So I guess Well, they- you know, with all them dealers, it, it, it all boils down to money. So if you go in there and buy a quart of, a quart of oil and everything, then I think they're probably more friendly. <laughs> uh, yeah, because... No, ours has a waiting list of like. Oh six yeah, that's the other thing. Not to name names, but back in January, my t- I lost a, a broken tie rod in. That's what it was. A broken tie rod in, and starter was starter was getting a little heat. So I said uh, I took it in three six months out of warranty, and they said, "Well, uh, thirty day waiting list. No, sixty day. Sixty day waiting list." And incidentally, remember everybody that was January, still waiting, still waiting for them to call and say, "Bring it in." I, I, I've learned to work on a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll just put that. So yeah, fix my tie rod, put a new starter on it. Runs like a charm. Nothing against Articat. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like, I don't like talking about the China virus. Um, uh, but, um, um, uh, but, um, um, everything is out. A lot of dealers have nothing. Uh, a lot of these dealers are a ghost town and everything like that. So it's still, they're are, still, so. that's the thing. All the, uh, now all the dealers that I've talked to or that I'm aware of, they're still able to get the buggies. They're still able to get the complete. Oh, yeah. Units. They're still, they, they take you about three or four months to get it. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I wish they would order a three to six month supply of parts. That's all I'm saying. The, uh, but yeah, it, uh, now Polaris, uh, they, uh, like I said, we, we've got one of those. Once again, uh, now we'll say the Polaris. Of course, I'm sure this is bigger, but uh, the uh, he uh, he liked it. My nephew liked it so much he got another one. He had a 500. Then he went, or yeah, then he went to the 750, I guess, in between. Uh, but of course, we're we're getting the utility vehicles. L- l- little side note there, but um, oh, a lot but, of people have them and everything. Definitely people at farms. Um, even, um, which I know this person's not, I guess, involved in Scarefest, of course, but, uh, even somebody like, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan and everything of The Walking Dead, um, uh, he's got, um, uh, a, um, a smaller one, everything for the farm and everything where he, where he lives at. And, um, and, uh, yeah, um, a lot of people have them. I did not know Jeffrey Dean Morgan had a farm. I like him even better. Book him. <laughs> Let me text Brandon right now. Uh, yeah, there, there. It's one of those things. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I would say definitely uh, get Jeffrey D. Morgan. <laughs> the, uh, it's one of those things that I never had, and I never realized that I couldn't do without until I had one. 
So that's and that's why I was asking if these things are actually uh, the ones that you work on. If they, I'm just thinking if you hit a bump, you know, my dash flies open. I can't imagine what would happen to yours trying to roll through the woods. Uh, it would rain. Yeah, speaker. that's why this and don't go in the woods <laughs> and everything. Because also, I'm thinking about. Um, um, I know after Scarefest that Sunday. We're gonna have the uh, the haunted or Halloween themed mm-hmm. uh, parade. I'm thinking about maybe I've been thinking about it for the last few days about talking to uh, the whoever controls that event and maybe have the Phantom Ghost Project drive through the parade if they allow a vehicle. So I'm very thinking about doing that Sunday before I leave Lexington. That that's an excellent idea. He's talking about everybody the Thriller Parade, which um, actually starts ex- almost exactly to the minute. That Scarefest closes, so we are part of the Lexington Halloween celebration. Uh, yeah, if you get in touch with the uh, Lexington, they've got a website. If you actually type in uh, Lexington Halloween celebration or Thriller Parade, whatever, they have a link to uh, and tell you who to call. It's at the Urban County Government and all that. But yeah, I think that's a great idea. And as far as I know, well, I mean they have floats, so it's it's not like they got. Teams of mules pulling the float, so you know they allow vehicles of some type. So there. Yep, I would think they wouldn't everything, but like I said, Scarefest has always got a um, a uh, part of my heart and everything. Um, it was it was great. I haven't been there now in four. Well, I'd be be four years and everything. I was there in 2017, so it'd be almost four years since so I've been to the Scarefest and everything with any kind of project, and um, I'm excited to come back and everything. So. Well, it's been two years since we've been, so yeah, you know we're right there with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, actually, but, I, yeah, yeah. If you think about it like that, it's two years, I guess, because they, when it ended in in twenty nineteen, I guess you had all that one year of not of calendar year, if you want to consider that, for like September, September, and September to September. So it's been two years, and they're like that. So um, yeah, I catch I myself I doing it all the time. I'll tell people what happened last year, and no, it's it's been two years. It's it's oh uh, well, we, we've all got COVID brain. What can we do anyway? Um, okay, um, nine forty three. Let's go ahead. We're going to do our last commercial break, and we'll be back, everybody, with more Scarefest TV to close out the night. Horror movie. Fan four life on Facebook. Find us four watch parties, four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. Everyone is talking about CBD oil. Most of us know that CBD is a cannabis compound that has significant medical benefits but does not make people high. Its benefits include pain relief, anti-seizure properties, anxiety relief, fights cancer, reduces the risk of diabetes, and it is even used as a sleep aid. Blue Leaf Naturals CBD and hemp products are full spectrum hemp extract oils. They use only hemp grown in Kentucky, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses and helping you and your family stay healthy and well. Blue Leaf Naturals, created with care from seed to shelf. Visit their website at blueleafnaturals.com. Blue Leaf Naturals, a Kentucky proud company. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest Television for the evening of Friday the 13th. Uh, Michael, 
Now, uh, you you kind of touched on it before, but let's let's kind of talk about some of the the inspiration behind the uh, the Ghost Phantom Project. Phantom Ghost Project. Sorry, that was a little no problem. <laughs> dyslexia there. But anyway, yeah, uh, tell it. Yeah, uh, like I said, it's Ghost Rider themed. So you see, I put the ghost. It's Phantom Ghost. At least I did put ghost in the name of the project, and that project name is well known. I haven't copyrighted it, but or, or patented or anything like that. But um, that name is well known. And um, but yeah, Ghost Rider's the theme, and um, I just didn't want to name it Ghost Rider Project and copy somebody else because everybody says, "Oh, you've been in a movie before." I was like, "Well, this is my own design, and everything, and nobody else has this." And which I'm very humble about these projects and everything like that. I'm, I don't compete for trophies or anything like that. I'm a very easy guy to get along with. And um, and um, as I am talking to Marvel or trying to put some filler in with Marvel about doing this on their Ghost Rider movie, it's still a couple years out from the even start development. Um, and um, um, so I'm definitely looking to do some different um, things and um, um, things like that. So it does got a lot of Ghost Rider resemblance to it and everything. Uh, a lot of chains. Um, chains and everything, real looking, well, not real chains, but chains that are plastic, but they have a chain look to them and stuff like that or different things and uh, just to have a Ghost Rider thing to it where it's got um, 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 just just different Ghost Rider resemblances and stuff now, like that. So, spe Okay, speaking of the chains, now I wanted to ask, have you ever weighed this thing? I was wondering if you knew what the weight was. Yes, yes. Um, the project weighs about, um, they weigh from the factory about 1,800 pounds from the factory, and the project weighs about 3,300, about 1,500 pounds extra, about 3,300. And uh, now, have you ever sat down with your pencil and figured out if you had to pay retail what, uh, what, what these little bits and pieces would cost you? Uh, like what the value of the machine, what the project is, the value of the project. Yeah, I mean, if okay, you like you you pointed out, you know, um, Polaris kicked in all these places, you know, gave you discounts. Some things just places gave you stuff just to show it off. But if you had to sit, yeah, what's the value of it? Do you think uh, if if you had to, if you were me and had to pay retail for everything because I don't really. Yeah, um, I get that question a lot and everything, of course. And um, um, I got very little in the machine, really, all in all. All the fiberglass work that costs about $150 an hour if you're out in California and Los Angeles and doing stuff for movie stars and stuff like that. And I just move, have money just to flip around. Um, and I got about 1,200 hours in fiberglass work. So if you take 1,200 times 150 an hour, um, that's close to probably 175,000 right there in fiberglass work. Um, and, uh, so it's probably got somewhere, uh, about $200,000 value. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of RTV, Chad. It is. We lost him again. Shoot. I was going to let you, I want you to circle back to that. How many video screens did he have? Coming back. He's coming back. Like I was saying that, um, um, that uh, with photo ops, um, everybody's allowed to stand beside the project and take photos. Nobody can sit in it and everything like that. But everybody that comes to Scarefest, they can stand right beside the project and 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 have a photo done and um, and no charge, um, and um, and just have fun. Let me touch on before we finish up. Um, where I was asking you earlier, and I think you got cut off before you could answer. Uh, we talked about the speakers and the stereo system. How about the video screens? How many screens you got? What are they all broadcast the same thing, or they have different purposes? No, it's got uh, six total screens. Uh, it's got two seven inches behind my seats, um, a seventeen inch flip down off the custom roof. I built a custom headliner, and it's got two monitor, visor, sun visor monitors, are twelve inches a piece. And then I got a touch screen TV because this thing's got a real computer. Uh, Intel sent me a real computer to go in this project. So it's actually got a real Intel computer. Um, it's got all kinds of fancy hard drives. And this, this project got three terabytes of hard drive. I mean, this thing is pretty much like the Pentagon with all the, all the, all the uh, hard drive space I got in this project. So, um, and, um, um, 
And they all do show the same thing. Yeah, all six screens uh, show the same image. Um, so, I mean, we you've put a lot of work into this and obviously a lot of skills behind it. Is this your day job? Do you have uh, do you work on ATVs or, or sell ATVs as your day job or is this strictly a hobby? No, no, this is hobby. Uh, hobby and everything like that. So, yeah, I don't do any fiberglass work for anybody else and everything like that. Um, it's just... Um, if, if you do something for somebody, they don't like it, they don't like it, and they want to start saying that you don't do good work and stuff like that. I had to do a lot of, uh, like when you see all the door panels and everything, all the speakers, if you look straight across at the speakers and everything like that, they're all even with each other. All the tweeters from one door to the other door, because the door panels, I got two of them, so I got to make each one of them match close where one don't look oddball versus the other one. So when I was building the doors, I had to build one door close to being done, and then mash the yellow door, and I had just had to walk back and forth to each door um, just to make sure and take a tape measure and measure things and everything to make sure it's properly placed and everything like that. So, um, um, so that's, that's pretty much it with that. Um, but no, I, I don't, I do this as a hobby. Well, it's amazing. I mean, you've obviously got a lot of skills and a, a lot of creativity with it, and it's amazing that you can um do all that with uh, during a hobby and not uh not dedicate full time to it but it's amazing work and i appreciate you sharing it with us tonight yep um and um um but yeah we got a lot of people to thank and um uh, i'm excited to come back to the scare fest and um I was going to try to have my fog machines working, but my fog machines are a different company that worked with me. So I didn't get them working, but they'll definitely be, um, I had the fog machines in the last project there. Um, um, at, at the scare fest, I know they got a new building, I guess a newer, newer building, I guess, because Nicole we'll call it they're in, a, in a newer position. I, I still remember how to get to the scare fest and everything. I know I had to turn back around a big old circle and then turn the first, road to the right and go up there and i gotta turn turn right at the first first the... road to the right go to the stop sign make another right and then when you made that first right you automatically turn right into that back of that building and everything like that where the back big old gates where i still remember all you know that. that chad that's actually something we have not addressed i have i know where the loading dock is that's where it always is but i have no idea how you get the stuff from the loading dock to the to the new convention center. I'm hoping somebody that's younger than yeah, me figures I, that out. I don't want to carry <laughs> anything, Wes. I, I, it had not occurred That's to me. Thank you. you when the, yeah, when I come to Scarefest in 2016, I was actually having to talk to Patty on the phone how to figure out how to get there and everything like that. So, and well, now with it being a new location, I'm going to have to have, I'm going to have to be on the phone with Nicole or somebody like that to tell me how to get there. Oh, I, I, I do Physically know, in the same location. Yeah, it's just the, configured different. Yeah. The, the, the entrance, they move the entrance a little bit, but the building itself is in the exact same place. And like I said, the loading dock is still in the, matter of fact, it's the same damn loading dock looked like from when I, when I drove by. So, but now, okay, that's everything. yeah, so yeah, uh, that, man, it's a pretty busy place and everything. And you get turned around some of them roads. <laughs> um, definitely you're hauling an 18 foot long, 18 foot long box trailer and everything like that. Um, uh, and, um, uh, gets a little hairy. But, and, uh, so I'm glad to know that I can, I figure I know, I think I can get there now then. So I don't think I have I, to worry about that. Yeah. It, like I said, the bu the building's in the same place. Just uh, the the doors the doors are all that have moved, and uh, and it sets up higher off the ground now. Everybody, uh, this has been Scarefest TV for the evening. I want to thank everybody for watching. Like I said, next week you're gonna really want to tune in. I have well, that, okay, it may not even be next week because there is a chance Friday night that um uh there won't be a Scarefest TV because we might or might not be on the road to uh to somewhere else. So just so you know. But but the next episode of Scarefest TV we're supposed to have I've already got all the names and I think that means they want me to go ahead and do banners for them. And I'm busy. I'm busy. No, we we got a lot we got our last celebrity I always hate using the word dump. Okay, that sounds so 
but that's what it is when you when you Nate when you when you drop six to ten guests in one episode announcement extravaganza announcement extravaganza that's what we'll call it everybody this has been Scarefest TV thanks for watching tonight.